Chris. We have 94. All right, let's get started. <laughs> Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us on Transgender Day of Remembrance. So I first want to recognize and acknowledge and honor the land that we are having this remembrance on, which is the traditional lands of the Yokut and the Mono people whose diverse tribal communities share stewardship over this land. My name is Dr. Kat Fobear. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm going to be serving as a kind of navigator for this event. This event is being sponsored by the Cross-Cultural and Gender Center, LGBTQ Programs and Services and Gender Programs, as well as by Trans Emotion. And you can find support and resources on Trans Emotion's Facebook, which you just go into Facebook and type in Trans Emotion, or if you want to check out the CCGC and especially the LGBTQ plus programming, check them out. Um, if you just Google uh, CCGC LGBTQ programming, it should take you directly to this link. So I'd like to share a little bit of history about TDOR. Just, you know, every year it might be somebody's first TDOR. Transgender Day of Remembrance was started in 1999 by transgender advocate Gwendolyn Ann Smith as a vigil to honor the memory of Rita Hester, a transgender woman who was killed in 1998. The vigil commemorates all the transgender and non-binary peoples lost to violence since Rita Hester's death and began an important tradition that has become the annual Transgender Day of Remembrance. Transgender Day of Remembrance seeks to highlight the losses we face due to anti-transgender bigotry and to, and violence, oops, sorry. And I am no stranger to the need to fight for these rights and the right to simply exist and foremost with so many people seeking to erase transgender people, some in the most brutal ways possible. This vigil is vitally important to those we remember and that we continue to fight for justice words by Gwendolyn Ann Smith. Transgender Day of Remembrance at Fresno State has been here for the past four years. So Trans Emotion, which is the organization that is co-sponsoring it, has been hosting TDUR since 2005. Uh, this year is going to be celebrating the fifth year of Transgender Day of Remembrance uh, being celebrated here at Fresno State. We have a very robust agenda for today and we're going to try as much as possible to stay on time. Um, with, we're going to start this event with our keynote Ome and then we're going to be listening to music uh, and then we're going to have a resource fair which will, ha will highlight organizations that cater to the transgender community. We will then be doing a remembrance for the transgender lives lost to violence this year and memorial for a local individual that we've lost this year. We will then go on to celebrating another uh, performer, Jess Fitzpatrick. We'll then go on to remembering global in regards to uh, transgender lives lost globally. And then we'll wrap up this event with a moment of silence. So with this, I uh, would like to introduce uh, Ome Lopez, and I will get out of my screen so that everybody can see them. What up, Kat? <laughs> Thank you for the nice little introduction. And I see some people on this platform already. I think I see Lucas on here. I know Zoyer is here. And I first want to say that I feel super blessed with who I am and how I've gotten to where I am in this life, on this earth, in this universe, or multiverse. Um, and my groundedness has really been connected to the community um, around me and that of which I have manifested. I think that sometimes what happens is we get into um, this headspace of the awareness of all the injustices that exist. Um, 
and sometimes feeling like a victim because one, I'm a female, I'm two spirit, uh, from a rural background, immigrant, you know, everybody can have a label that can be uh, uh, sometimes um, um, treated unjustly. And then we can flip it and we can think about all of the power that we have, all of the strength that we have, the knowledge, the resources, our ancestors, and bring them into the space where we're working to manifest our greatness. And um, I feel more whole today than I have ever been at the age of 40. I'll be 41 in December, uh, December 2nd. But I want to, I know there's people on this platform, uh, so many beautiful people on this platform. Um, April or Henry, Spencer, I see you all on here, Alexa, Alexia. Um, I want to ask you to do me this favor and to bring into this space energy, beautiful positive energy that you already have and put into the chat. I want you to put it into the chat what you are manifesting for yourself, for your family, for your community as we walk into this holiday season and into 2021. So if you all can do that for me right now, I would really appreciate it. Just go into the chat right now and say, whatever you're manifesting, love, joy, beauty, celebration, connection, I don't know, uh, unicorn powers. <laughs> I see it in the chat, health, art, peace, wholeness, love, space for things that better serve me, boundless love and freedom, acceptance, inclusion, healing, peace. Yes, yes, I love it. Forgiveness, yes, brave love, joy, happiness, kindness, dopeness, yes, all of these things. This is what we carry with us. If only we allow it, self-love, vulnerability and love if only we allow it for ourselves that that's the only way is up and is to feel connected to oneself is by expressing it to yourself and believing that you deserve all of the celebration that comes to you is come to you because you deserve that and any other things that are around you that are hard that are difficult their challenges that come to you and they are in your path to help you grow. If you can believe that, then anything is possible. And this is what I feel like, I gotta say that it's been very, a very interesting life that I have had where in 2003, I decided to jump and I decided to follow my passion of providing events for the community and DJing and being paid for what I do and having a career doing it. And there were parts of me that felt that maybe it wasn't gonna be possible because I'm female bodied or because I'm two spirit, um, because I'm not Latinx that that might not happen. And what I realized was those were barriers in my mind that I created for myself and that I needed to work through those and there were a lot of different ways that I worked through those, but, but primarily it was the community, the people around me. And some of those people are here in this space that I'm so thankful that I've crossed your path. And part of that path that was crossed was through the experience of being a part of Trans Emotion um, many years ago. So I'm also a co-founder of Trans Emotion. Some people don't know that. Um, it began, um, Many years ago, in about, I don't know, 2005, when I was a lot younger, myself and a lot of other young people, included in here, Lucas, um, we um, banded together and we had the Imagine Change Coalition as young activists and we utilized our energy, the strength, the freaking vibes that we had and we created Trans Emotion and we, we did the first Transgender Day of Remembrance in, in connection with Gay Straight Alliance Network as well. Um, and it was so beautiful. And so today, being where I'm at, 
trans emotion was a part of helping me grow into the human that I am today. So I, I hope you guys know, want to know something really cool. I actually went to uh, 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 doctor yesterday at, uh, for chest surgery. So I'm in that process right now to reach my, you know, whole human self for how I want my body to align with my gender identity, which is non-conforming. And it's kind of scary, but I know that I'm going to be helped through it with people like you. Um, and um, my family and friends and those that I've decided to keep in my life that are holding me close um, and that are celebrating me. And this is what I just wanted to let you guys know that like, for you to get to wherever you want to be, don't think that like, because of where you're from or who you are, that you don't deserve all of the gifts that, that are coming your way because they're, they're coming to you if only you allow yourself to receive them. And I'm hoping that I continue to just, you know, keep this level of positive energy and manifestation for, for my greatness. And, um, and I know that my masculine and feminine energy is what's keeping me uh, who I am with so much joy and happiness. So thank you. Thank you, Ome. And I just wanted to say on behalf of everybody, you're, you're seeing the comments, but congratulations. And you rock. Like, you just rock. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being here. Thank you. I love you guys. Hi, Lucas. Love you too. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, one quick second. Just getting set up again. Okay, so uh, for every TDOR, we usually have a, when we're in person, not the COVID edition, we usually have a lot of performers share and, and perform for us. Um, we do have one great performer that's going to be sharing with us uh, later on, but we wanted to just provide some music to not only recognize and honor, but to also empower us, especially in this rem remembrance. So. Um, it was suggested to uh, Trans Emotion members to play this video, so I'm going to be doing that. Um, lyrics are, if you Google them, it's uh, Rabel the Village, so enjoy. And stop sharing and reshare again, thank you. Yep, sorry about that, technical glitch. Let me try this again. computer sound. Here we go. Sorry about that. We'll start this again. One quick second, sorry. Okay, so So thank you, everybody. And uh, with that, we're going to open up for the resource fair. And we have the first uh, resource fair, which is uh, the Fresno Spectrum Center. So take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Leon Velasco Stoll. Uh, I'm the chairperson and the founder for the Fresno Spectrum Center. Uh, it is a project of the Pride Panthers Coalition. Uh, we're here to help with providing things for the community. We are a grassroots effort, a nonprofit organization. Uh, we help out in providing connections to local sustaining resources, providing activities and social groups. Unfortunately, at this time, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, you'll see that a lot of our activities, we had to kind of po uh, postpone for, uh, such as youth time, uh, the Golden Guys and Gals, which is for uh, individuals 50 on up, uh, 
at our game day, arts and crafts night, as well as the transit art night. Uh, we've had to uh, actually postpone those until we can safely gather together and enjoy these activities again. Uh, the only one we're actually doing right now is the Spectrum Story Hour, which is caught live on our Facebook. Uh, and we have the hostess Isis Deluna with uh, a lot of wonderful books that we buy uh, that are entertaining as well as educational and informational inclusion, empowerment, and all that stuff. Uh, so we encourage you to uh, check it out. Uh, we also have projects such as the LGBT September Spectacular Resource Fair and Food Distribution. We normally host on holidays things like the grandparent, uh, adopt a grandparent for the holidays or adopt a star for the youth for the holidays. Unfortunately, with the pandemic, again, we've had to kind of halt some of these things. So right now we're just doing a holiday toy drive. And we're also doing uh, the registration for families in need because of this pandemic in our community. A lot of families have been hit the hardest. So um, we are encouraging individuals to contact our center right now, um, either by phone or an instant message or email, and we can get you that those details. So if you'd like more information on what we're able to provide as far as services and linkages for life-sustaining resources, uh, like uh, crisis intervention, um, domestic violence, human trafficking, immigration, uh, any kind of uh, other resources, we can get you linked up, uh, as well as uh, connections to local LGBT organizations for resources too, uh, that you may not be aware of. So we just wanted to present our agency to you, uh, that we are LGBTQ, S, uh, 2S uh, inclusive as well as to our allies. So we don't turn anyone away for however they identify. Please uh, see, search us, see just, uh, <laughs> let me try that again. <laughs> search us out on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we have a lot of other avenues that we can help out as well. Okay, so enjoy the rest of this programming and we hope to see you soon. Thank you, bye-bye. Okay, and so with this, then I uh, want to uh, introduce the Cross Cultural Gender Center. Take it away. All right, so hello everyone and, and welcome. My name is Esteban Parra Guerrero. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I am the coordinator of LGBTQ plus and gender programs and services at the Fresno State Cross Culture and Gender Center or CCGC for short, or like I like to say the happiest place on campus. So who are we and what do we do? Through our programming and events, we foster meaningful dialogue and activism that works to eliminate sexism, heterosexism, homophobia, transphobia, and other forms of oppression. As the program coordinator of LGBTQ plus and gender programs and services, we carry out events to celebrate, celebrate Women's History Month and educate folks on Sexual Assault Awareness Month our LGBTQ plus prom, and many more events. We also collaborate with other departments and community organizations to work together to make Fresno State a more inclusive and welcoming space for everyone. And of course, we support programs like Transgender Day of Remembrance, Fresno State Rainbow Graduation, and Safe Zone events uh, hosted by the Fresno State LGBT plus Faculty and Staff Allies Network. In collaboration with other departments, we recently launched a training for our faculty and staff about the importance of gender pronouns. This training was supported by a very own campus leader, President Joseph I. Castro. Overall, at the CCGC, we currently have six full-time employees, nine student staff, which we truly appreciate, and three interns. As a team, we have uh, carry over 40 virtual programs since we were first asked to work remotely back in March. We currently host seven discussion groups per week, seven discussion groups per week, sorry, uh, for our Fresno State faculty, staff, students, and community. Our LGBTQ plus discussion group is hosted every Thursday at noon. And again, this is a safe space for everyone to join just to check in, whether it is for five minutes, 10 minutes, or the full hour. And as you can see, uh, next to me the little rooms the affinity rooms they're all ready for you once the campus reopens but for now please join us virtually for our, our future events 
And I encourage you all to follow us on social media and stay up to date with our events. I promise you that there are events for everyone, but most importantly, everyone is always welcome to all of our events. Um, lastly, uh, on behalf of the CCGC family, I would like to sincerely thank Trans Emotion for allowing us to support this very special and important event. Thank you. Thank you, Esteban. All right. And now I'm happy to introduce the Fresno EOC Sanctuary LGBTQ Resource Center. Hey, Thanks, Kat. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Jennifer Cruz. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm the program manager for the Fresno EOC LGBTQ Resource Center. Uh, happy to be here with everybody. And um, like so many, uh, during this time of COVID, our drop-in space has been closed since the initial shutdown in March. Um, previously, we had a drop-in space where people could drop in. Um, grab a bite to eat, see a case manager, uh, join our support groups, those types of things. Um, we hope when the purple tier goes away and we eventually can gather, that will be something that's coming back. Um, since then, we've moved our online support groups to virtual and those are available via Zoom. Uh, you can see those there on the, on the slide. So those are available Monday through Wednesday and there's a uh, youth 17 and under group as well as an adult group. Um, 18 and over. Uh, we also are doing a new transgender group that meets on Thursdays from 6 to 7 p.m. All this information is available um, on our social media pages and uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Fresno EOC uh, dot I'm sorry at Fresno EOC dot LGBTQ. Um, so those are Facebook, Instagram. We're also on Twitter and uh, we're offering those uh, support groups still virtually. Um, we also can be contacted um, via phone or you can text us or you can email us so that we can get you um, connected to ever, whatever resources you may be looking for. Um, there's all sorts of resources that are available right now um, through the center and through other uh, organizations that we're connected with. Um, currently we are going to be starting a couple new programs that I wanted to just touch on really quickly. There's a, a new MAP program, which you all may be familiar with, that is usually people in Fresno head out to Pavarella for that, but we have one of those operating out of the center. We're currently waiting on marketing materials to get that information up, but if you need MAP services, you can contact us via phone or email um, and or message us on Facebook or Instagram to get uh, resources for that. There's a community outreach educator in the center and a navigator in the center currently. Um, so set up an appointment for that via Zoom or telephone or otherwise. Um, We're also soon to be starting a substance use disorder prevention program. We have a case manager on site for that program and hopefully we're hoping to be going into schools and um, community colleges and Fresno State classes to talk about substance use disorder prevention and get the young people the information they need about that. Um, we hope that that will lead to, when that grant was written, it was supposed to all be in person, um, but we hope that we will be able to get some young people um, able to come to us and apply for monies for us to pay for peer support um, certification, peer support um, mentor type certification through City College, or potentially substance use disorder um, counseling certification. So that's something new. Look out for that and information on that this year. And um, if, if there is case management or other resources needed, you can stop, uh, not stop by the center because currently because COVID it's closed, but you can me uh, message us, call us, text us. Again, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we're at Fresno EOC dot LGBTQ. And um, yeah, so we hope to see everybody again in person soon. Everyone stay safe, take care. Also um, for Fresno EOC out on that um, corner of Mariposa and Fulton Street, we are doing um, uh, EOC in collaboration with uh, another organization is doing um, 
COVID testing for free. That's on Tuesdays from three to five. So everybody get tested, stay safe, and happy to be here and see everyone and stay safe. Thank you, Jen. And now I'm pleased to introduce the Source LGBTQ Center. Hi, everybody. My name is Spencer Salazar. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the trans program coordinator for the Source LGBT Plus Center, which is actually located in Visalia, California. So a little bit south of Fresno. Um, just a few things about us. Um, like our little motto is, you don't have to be out to come in. Uh, and that's even in these virtual spaces as well. Um, and our mission is to provide spaces within our communities for the LGBTQ plus population to learn, grow, belong, transform, question, and support. Um, the source has been in Visalia for four years now, and it's been an amazing place to work. Um, with the trans program, as I am the coordinator, uh, we do quite a few things, but our main resource is our support and resource groups that we now are holding online because of COVID. Um, but it's been a wonderful experience to be able to still connect with people, especially in a time uh, where we need love and support. And so we're continuing those groups. And if you or someone you know could benefit from these, um, please have them email me. My email is down at the bottom. It's spencer at the source lgbt.org. Uh, another wonderful thing we started this year was a binder program for our trans masculine, trans men. Um, sometimes in transition, it can be very difficult to afford some of these things and so we are trying to help alleviate that and bring you into a more gender euphoric um, experience um, so once again if you're interested you can email me or i always recommend uh, following us on instagram or facebook we do virtual center spaces there online on facebook you can watch us uh, we do monday night uh, mental health mondays we do friday wrap-ups we're going to be doing some interviews here coming pretty soon that's exciting um, but yeah, if you ever need anything, we're always here. You don't have to be out to come in. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Spencer, for this. And now on to an organization uh, that hopefully many of you know of is Trans Emotion. So I'm very proud to be presenting for Trans Emotion. I've been a board member for Trans Emotion for uh, three years, and it's been an amazing experience. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Trans Emotion is, it's a nonprofit organization located here in Fresno, California. The goal is to provide support and education to both transgender persons, their family, and friends. Trans Emotion hosts several events throughout the year, including TDOR, but also Transgender Day of Visibility, which usually happens sometime in the spring. Uh, currently, most of our outreach is online due to COVID, uh, but Trans Emotion does hold two support groups a month through Zoom, uh, the second Friday of the month at 5.30 to 7, and the third Friday of the month at 5.30 to 7. If you want any information about getting involved with Trans Emotion, and connected to the support groups, contact us. Uh, you, we can contact us through Messenger on Facebook. Check us out on Facebook. That's that's the best area to get a lot of news as well as we share a lot of resources there. We are also hosting tonight, after this event, a transgender and GNC support group. Uh, so that's going to be going from like 7:30 to 8:30. So details about how to get connected to come just to even just to debrief to share to talk just to meet one another it's a great sort of source um it's going to be the information will be up on our facebook and one last thing so uh in working with um the lgbtq resource center and fresno state women gender and sexuality studies uh trans emotion is also involved in a very important health survey that is happening here. It's the first of its kind where we are trying to collect data on transgender and non-binary experiences of trying to access health care. If you check the link, uh, if you check the, ch uh, the chat box, uh, Esteban will put a link to the survey for those, and it's only open to those who identify as transgender, non-binary, um, 
And uh, if you complete the survey, you can get a $25 uh, gift certificate. Um, and then in addition, we're asking people to share their experiences through an interview uh, about accessing healthcare, especially sort of trying to, to recognize any barriers to healthcare services. Our goal with this research is to write a report about what's going on and to try to advocate for more resources here in Fresno and the Central Valley. So for those of you, um, if you could share it, participate, the more voices we can get, the better to advocate for our communities. And with that, oops, sorry about that. Uh, with that, I'm going to now pass it on to April to talk about the Holistic Cultural and Education Wellness Center. Uh, yes, I would just like to um, share the information about the Fresno Center. They are an organization in town. They are on East Kings Canyon. They're the facility that um, we host our in-person support groups at when we're able to. Um, they always offer us a great, safe, and um, supportive environment. And they um, will often check into our support groups to remind us that they're an organization that's there for us and very supportive. So we just wanted to make sure um, we let the community know about the other services they offer. Thank you. And with that, I want to thank all the organizations who came tonight to share. I think it's been so incredibly amazing the work that you provide, not only for the trans community, but the LGBTQ community and many other intersecting communities. It is this work that not only inspires me, but also helps so many within the community. So thank you for taking the time out, share your resources. For those of you who have been watching and listening, please check them out. They're great organizations. There's a lot of amazing support, as well as really cool things happening at these places. And with that then, I'm going to stop my share so that we can go to our next keynote, which is, who is Henry Mraz. Hi everyone, um, thank you for having me here. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, my name is Henry Mraz, my pronouns are he, him, his. I am the owner and a licensed clinical social worker at Safe and Affirmative Counseling here in Fresno. Uh, we are a, um, a privately owned um, outpatient mental health clinic that serves um, the LGBT community and primarily um, transgender, non-binary, gender non-conforming and genderqueer clients. And um, I have a team of staff that I'll work to kind of create this safe and affirmative space within the Central Valley. Uh, right now we're currently working primarily via telehealth um, but we're still available if anybody out there has any um, need for those kind of resources. Um, that's kind of why I was asked to come here was to speak a little bit more about mental health needs in the transgender, non-binary, genderqueer, and gender non-conforming spaces. And um, I guess I've kind of seen some different needs. Um, there's a lot, of course, out there for all different populations, but I kind of wanted to focus on ones that are more applicable to the Central Valley and the rural areas that most of us are in. And so, um, I definitely, the biggest need I think, and I think a lot of you would agree is definitely, and also um, links a little bit to the, the health survey that was mentioned earlier, which is um, having more providers that are um, trained in working with LGBT clients, with transgender clients, with, with queer clients. Um, there's not a lot of people, people will say they're like, you know, supportive or like, you know, maybe they have like a, a gay friend or like a lesbian friend or a transgender friend, they assume that's like, you know, being competent and working um, with the community. And really, it's not, it's, it's a good start, but I think there's definitely a need for more training, more education. Um, and the biggest thing for me that I would, that I just think that we really, really need is um, our gender queer and transgender non-binary therapists and providers, including healthcare professionals as well, like doctors and NPs, PAs, nurses, um, so clients can kind of see those faces, um, you know, um, mirrored when they go to receive services. There's not a lot of therapists um, that I know in this area that are, um, you know, that, that, that do identify as a part of the LGBT community, even less identify as transgender or non-binary. So there's a big need. So if any of you out there are interested in that, um, we need that so much here in the Central Valley. So that's a definite need. Um, another one is, um, those of us that are providers, 
we need more providers who are willing to write letters for um, our clients who want maybe HRT or are looking to get top surgery or just the various other services um, that are needed for the transgender um, community here in the Central Valley. A lot of um, doctors and therapists get nervous in writing letters and can be also can be gatekeepers at time. And so I think it's important for that training component to also include like being willing to support, you know, um, and that means to not create any barriers for, for, for care as well. And so for us, I know my approach is like trying to be as affirming as possible. And Central Valley, I'm sure some of you guys know, is a little conservative. So sometimes there could be a lot of gatekeeping and we could really use just more affirming, more love, more acceptance, and just less um, having clients have to explain themselves over and over again, you know? Um, another thing that I found to be impor another important need for the mental health community is related to um, parents. So I work a lot with transgender youth and with um, young adults as well. And there's not a lot of resources for parents. And sometimes I'll do a little bit of my own little, you know, investigating to kind of link parents with other parents who have, you know, kiddos and similar, or even young adult kids in similar situation. And um, so there's not a lot of resources for parents in terms of, um, I know there's PFLAG in Fresno, but um, I don't really know many parents who actually go to PFLAG. So I feel like it's um, not the most um, vibrant resource. So definitely we need more support for parents as well. So I know some of the nonprofits that spoke, you guys have a lot of great groups. I would highly recommend um, maybe adding a parent group. I have a lot of parents that I could refer. Um, so that's definitely a need that I see that could really benefit our trans youth as well as people that are just starting their transition um, to have that kind of um, extra help for their parents to kind of be more on board as well. Um, the last thing I want to speak about for mental health needs would be um, some insurance barriers, you know, um, more work around um, less gatekeeping by insurance companies, um, trying to really um, just, um, you know, not, you, I guess pretty much insurance companies be more on board with providing support for the LGBT community and whatever their needs are. And I know right now it's been really scary for a lot of people um, because worrying about their health care, you know, are, are they gonna be able to keep it? You know, people are worrying about like with COVID and everything, what's gonna happen? Um, also, you know, like um, transgender rights, you know, it's kind of scary with the way things are looking with, you know, politics and Supreme Court and things like that. So I think just, um, yeah, I'm sure you guys don't know about all those things, but just we use more, more support with that as well. And so can, um, yeah, definitely more support. The last thing they asked me to speak about was um, so some support for, um, for what I recommend for allies, people that just want to be more support for the LGBT community, primarily for um, for transgender folks, um, I would highly recommend just being supportive, showing love, and being as validating as you can be. You know, um, not everything has to be understood. All you have to do is just love somebody for who they are. You know, so I don't really have a lot of great advice for allies in terms of, um, you know, um, what to do. But I just think that you know, I myself, you know, am an ally, and um, I just don't ask any questions. I just, um, you know, love people for for who they are and Try not to ask, you know, not to judge. And that's what I would highly recommend for anybody out there who maybe might know somebody, maybe it's a sibling or a friend or 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 a kid, you know, um, just love and support. Yeah. Well, that's all I got for now about mental health needs. Um, so thank you guys for your time. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Henry, and thank you for all the work that you do. And yeah, there's a lot of good advice there too. And yeah, parental group definitely needed. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, start my screen share again. So one quick second. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is showing the Memorial to Transgender Lives Lost in 2020. Uh, these are the uh, names that have been reported. And yeah, so we'll get started now.
We welcome you to Honoring and Remembering Transgender Lives Lost 2020. Every November 20th, around the world, we recognize and remember transgender lives lost to violence, suicide, and now COVID-19. The Transgender Day of Remembrance serves several purposes. It raises public awareness of hate crimes against transgender people, an action that current media doesn't perform. Day of Remembrance publicly mourns and honors the lives of our brothers and sisters who might otherwise be forgotten. Through this vigil, we express love and respect for our people in the face of national indifference and hatred. Day of Remembrance reminds non-transgender people, cisgender people, that we are their sons, daughters, parents, friends, and lovers. Day of Remembrance gives our allies a chance to step forward with us and stand in vigil, memorializing those of us who've died by anti-transgender violence. Before we begin, we want to recognize the difficulty that many in our transgender community may experience and the pain they might experience while listening and watching the reading of the names. For any of you who need someone to talk to, please reach out to Trans Emotion via Facebook or to any of the organizations that were present during the resource fair. They are there to help. And with that, we will begin with the reading of the names. Dustin Parker, 25 years old, killed in McAllister, Oklahoma. His employers released a statement shortly after his death, remembering Parker as a steadfast friend, an amazing husband and father, and generous to a fault. He loved fiercely, worked tirelessly, and took on life with so much hope and enthusiasm that his presence brightened all of our lives. Dustin. Alex McRae, 22 years old, suicide, St. Louis, Missouri. Alex was at the forefront of the bathroom issue at his high school, Williamsville High School. He is remembered as a quiet but fierce trailblazer. McRae won the ACLU's John R. Hamill Award for his contri contribution to fighting for equal rights for LGBTQ Americans in 2017. The Illinois Safe School Alliance named him Activist of the Year in 2016. Alex. Camila Maria Concepcion, 28 years old, suicide, Los Angeles, California. Camila was a talented writer with a passion for storytelling, lifting up unre underrepresented voices, and fighting for representation in front of and behind the camera. She made bold and critical contributions to our industry, most recently through her incredible writing on Kentified, and her legacy will live on through her work. Camila Maria Concepcion. Neolisa Luciano Ruiz, killed in Tawabaja, Puerto Rico, after being arrested for using a woman's restroom the previous day. According to Metro Puerto Rico, members of her community knew her as humble and noble, Neolisa. Yampi Mendez Orocho, 19 years old, killed in Motka, Puerto Rico. Shared his love for basketball and the NBA, donning Miami Heat apparel and social media, the biography line on his Facebook reads, simply, humility prevails. Yumpy. John Scott Devore, Scotland Kelly Devore, 51 years old, killed in Augusta, Georgia. John Scott, Scotland Kelly, identified as non-binary and genderqueer. John Scott, Scotland Kelly. Monica Diamond, 
34 years old, killed in Charlotte, North Carolina. Diamond was active in the Charlotte LGBTQ and nightlife community and was the co-owner of an event promotion company. She also was the co-CEO of the International Mother of the Year pageantry system, a pageant that honors LGBTQ mothers. Monica. Lexi, 33 years old, killed in Harlem, New York. Lavonia Brooks, a friend of Lexi, said of her, I re really look up to her because of her tolerance and respect. Lexi had a beautiful heart. She was very gifted. Brooks also noted that Lexi loved poetry, makeup, and fashion. Lexi. Lorena Bojas, 59 years old, died from COVID-19, Queens, New York. Known as the mother of the transgender Latinx community in Queens, New York, her work on behalf of immigrant and transgender communities garnered recognition throughout New York City and the United States. Moore, 26 years old, killed in Newark, New Jersey. Ashley's mother said to, about her that she was very much loved. Ashley. Henrietta Robinson, 79 years old, died of COVID-19, Miami, Florida. Known variously as the mother of Miami Beach, the grand lady of South Beach, the queen of South Beach, and more by friends and admirers, Robinson won the development of the area's LGBTQ nightlife and drag scene since 1959. Henrietta. Joanna Metzger, killed in Baltimore, Maryland. Joanna was known for her love of music and taught herself to play multiple instruments. Joanna. Penelope Diaz Ramirez, 31 years old, killed in Puerto Rico. Penelope loved makeup, fashion, and performing. Penelope. Serena Angelique Velasquez Ramos, 32 years old, killed in Puerto Rico. She, the loved ones for her are mourning her death, calling her full of life, a happy person, and a sincere friend. Serena. Leila Falayas Sanchez, 21 years old, killed in Puerto Rico. Leila's cousin described her as an easygoing young woman who had just been raised by her grandmother and was just beginning to explore the world. Leila. Nina Pop, 28 years old, killed in Sixton, Missouri. Nina talked about her home and her family, sharing a throwback photo of her and her siblings. Nina's family, friends, and community are mourning her loss, sharing on Facebook that everybody loved her. Nina. Hella J. O'Regan, 20 years old, killed, spoke out against injustice, including the LGBTQ inequality, the prison industrial complex, and the need to decriminalize sex work. Hella. Jane Thompson, 33 years old, killed by a Colorado State Patrol trooper, Mesa County, Colorado. Friends remember her as an amazing person, with one friend saying, I hope that people realize that she was very thoroughly loved and cared for. There was a lot more than met the eye. Jane. Tony McDade, 38 years old, fatally shot by Tallahassee police in Tallahassee, Florida. His friends and family shared how he was an energetic, giving person with a big heart. Tony. Selena Reyes 
Hernandez, 37 years old, killed in Chicago, Illinois. We have lost a beloved member of our trans family because of hate. Hate that has corrupted our country's soul and that shatters lives and futures every day. Selena. Dominique Remy Fells, 27 years old, killed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. One personal friend posted online, Dom was a unique and beautiful soul who I'm lucky to have known personally. I am beside myself right now. We need to fight. We need to do more. We will get justice. Dominique. Rhea Milton, 25 years old, killed in Liberty Township, Ohio. In March, she posted on her status, never been scared to struggle, I'm going to get it eventually. A comment highlighting her resilience and optimism as a person facing a transphobic, misogynist, and racist society. Rhea. Brian Egypt Powers, 43 years old, killed in Akron, Ohio. As a child, Powers dreamed of becoming a backup dancer for Janet Jackson or Paula Abdul. Powers worked at a local catering company and is remembered for wearing long and colorful braids, which they called unicorn braids. Brian. Brayla Stone, 17 years old, killed in Little Rock, Arkansas. Brayla Stone was a child. A child just beginning to live her life. A child of trans experience. A black girl. A person who had hopes and dreams and plans and community. Brea. Tatiana Hall, 22 years old, killed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Her favorite color was purple. She was beloved community member. Tatiana. Mercy Mack, 22 years old, killed in Dallas, Texas. Her loved one shared how beautiful of a friend she was. On her social media, she had recently posted that she enjoyed baking and that she was looking forward to returning to work. Mercy. Drea McCarty, 28 years old, killed in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Drea. Shaki Peters, 32 years old, killed in Amite City, Louisiana. Shaki would provide moments of joy and laughter that sustained us. Whenever you're facing the systemic issues we face as black people, that triple identity of being a black trans woman, it's easy to just give up or not want to get out of bed. But you never saw Shaki do that. She definitely was an inspiration in how she navigated life. Shaki. Bree Black, 27 years old, killed in Pompano Beach, Florida. Her family and friends remember her as a fun, loving, and kind person. Bree. Summer Taylor, 24 years old, killed when a car drove into a group of Black Lives Matter protesters in Seattle, Washington. They were always the first one to call people out for being sexist, racist, standing up for queer and trans people, basically anyone who needed to be stood up for. They were the ones that were so vocal. Summer. Angela Martinez Gomez, 42 years old, died from COVID-19, Santa Monica, California. Angela worked 15 years at a Burger King. Management refused to let her leave work even after she showed numerous symptoms and her employers later blamed her death on injecting hormones. Angela. Marilyn Carvez, 22 years old, killed in Brawley, California. Mindy Garcia, an aunt of Carvez said, 
She loved to sing and dance, and she was very beautiful. Marilyn. Tiffany Harris Diorhova, 32 years old, killed in Bronx, New York. Everyone loves her. She is one of a kind. Tiffany. Keisha DeHardy, 22 years old, killed in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Friends and loved ones described her as loyal, loving, always smiling, the life of all parties, and truly one of a kind. Keisha. Aja Raquel Rone Spears, 34 years old, killed while attending a vigil for Black Lives Matter in Portland, Oregon. Rowan Spears was incredibly close to her family, posting photos with her father and playful statuses related to conversations she had with family members about cooking. She called out instances of racial justice, especially violence by police, and advocated for a world free from white supremacy. Aja. Ki Sam. 24 years old, killed in Lafayette, Louisiana. Friends have been remembering Key Sam on her Instagram page, commenting with heartful messages, including, This can't be real. I will miss you. You know you are in my heart forever. And rest in love. Key. Isabella Mia Lofton, 21 years old, killed in Brooklyn, New York. Isabella. Aaron Burnett, 37 years old, killed in Independence, Missouri. Her friends and family shared, if you wanted to have a good day, you need to smile. Aaron was the person you wanted by your side. Aaron. Mia Green, 29 years old, killed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Her friends and family shared her smile was so perfect and so contagious. She made me laugh. Mia. Michelle Micheline Ramos Vargas, 33 years old, killed in San Germain, Puerto Rico. Michelle was studying to become a nurse at Ponce, Paramedical College. Michelle. Felicia Harris, 33 years old, killed in Augusta, Georgia. Felicia was an interior decorator who ran her own company where she enjoyed lending her eye to improve the surrounding of others and made others feel comfortable in their own space. Felicia. Brooklyn Deshuna, 20 years old, killed in Shreveport, Louisiana. Brooklyn attended Bossier Parish Community College and studied cosmetology. Brooklyn. Sarah Blackwood, 39 years old, killed in Indianapolis, Indiana. She was described as thoughtful, curious person who was politically active online. She liked nature documentaries and video games. She was beloved at the Kroger store where she used to work. She had three cats and a happy life with her partner in Indianapolis. Sarah. Angel Unique, 25 years old, killed in Memphis, Tennessee. Everybody knew Angel knew that she was very funny very nice to everybody she met. Angel. And with this, we recognize all the lives lost. We honor and remember every life because every life is precious. For all of those who have passed, rest in power. And for all of you watching, you are not alone, you matter, 
For any of you who need someone to talk to, please reach out to Trans Emotion via Facebook, to the Cross-Cultural Gender Center, or to any of the organizations present at our resource fair. They are there to help. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody. Oops. We welcome you to Honoring and Remembering Transgender Lives Lost 2020. Sorry about that, okay. We welcome you to Honoring and Remembering Transgender Lives Lost One quick second, apologize for the, the uh, technical difficulties. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so thank you everybody for joining us with this. We like to honor and recognize transgender lives lost locally. And with this, um, we would like to honor Ray Aaron Widden. We have a um, guest speaker tonight to speak on Ray's behalf. Hi there, everybody. Um, my name is Lucas Porter. I'm actually coming to you from Portland, Oregon, and my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm actually one of the co-founders of Transemotion, so um, it's very cathartic uh, to be joining you guys tonight. Um, so I'm going to be talking about one of my best friends, uh, Ray. Uh, he and I um, met in high school. Um, we met through GSA Network. Uh, and actually, at the very first planning meeting for Transemotion, uh, he was sitting across from me in the room. Um, we all kind of sat there that day at the first planning meeting and we, we listened to Ome explain what Transgender Day of Remembrance was and how it was time for Fresno to finally have their own event. And we spent weeks planning the first Transgender Day of Remembrance. We had an art exhibit and performances and the news came. And I have this picture of Ray um, standing in the crowd, very solemn, as a projector was showing a list of names of people we had lost. And at the time, um, Ray was still discovering himself. And I could tell that there was a lot of anguish. And that was exactly 15 years ago tonight. Um, and sadly, I'm here to say that um, Ray died from suicide uh, in September, um, and I really can't try to imagine what was going through his mind at the time, um, but I do know that for all of the strength that he inspired in other people, he just couldn't muster it for himself that night. Um, he dealt with people who should have been his sanctuary and safety, um, constantly misgendering him, and not accepting who he was. Um, it was really hard for those of us who loved him uh, and who accepted him from the moment we found out that he was trans. It was never an issue. Um, you know, he spent so much of his young life being an activist and a motivator and an inspirer. Um, we actually attended our first protest together in 2000 and five um, focus on the family came to the people's church in fresno and we decided that we wanted to go out there and maybe spread some love and so we came up with our own little chant and we were probably the youngest people there i was 18 and he was 17 and we were under an umbrella because it was raining and um we just started chanting um, jesus loves the little children all the children of the world whether straight or bi or gay we're precious in every way jesus loves the little children of the world and other people started joining in and both him and I were agnostic, but we thought it was just appropriate to combat that type of hate. And um, since then, uh, over the summer, he was a volunteer medic for Black Lives Matter protests in Sacramento. Um, and every moment that he was around other people was spent uplifting and loving them. Um, uh, so he impacted so many people with just how much optimism and hope that he possessed. Um, 
it was a rare gift that he was able to make other people see themselves through his eyes. Um, and he would make us see how beautiful we really were. Um, it was a rare gift. Um, something super tacky, but I have this collage that I put on this throw rug. I, know, I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but I'll move it all around. But I got it the day that I found out, the day that he died, um, so that I could keep it in front of my closet so that every morning when I'm getting ready, it'll just remind me to spend my life spreading love because I don't know how much time I have left and there's just not enough room for hate in this world. Um, so I'm gonna leave you by reading the poem that is on your screen. Uh, it was written by my friend Zoyer, who I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with, um, but it was beautiful and it's very personal for him. So you didn't know it, but I looked up to you. You stood up for your beliefs, what you knew to be true. I admire your courage to be out. When it came to my transition, you helped remove my self-doubt. You congratulated me for being me. Your life has invaluable meaning. Your life is full, fun, yet cut too short. And those who love you in the afterlife offer their unconditional support. You helped others, stay, you helped others stood up for their rights. I wish I could have been there for you that night. You were comforting when you saw anyone in pain. I want you to know, no matter what, your life was never in vain. We love you, Ray, and we won't forgive you. Forget you. Rest in power. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you so much, Lucas. And all my love to you and to everybody who knew Ray and loved Ray. Thank you for being here. And now with this, I'd like to share beautiful music by Jess Fitzpatrick. Jess Fitzpatrick uh, is a out and proud trans man, it has a beautiful voice, and is also working at the EOC LGBTQ Resource Center. Did we connect audio, Just Dr. Fabric? Oh, one quick second. Sorry. It should have happened. One, sorry. One quick second. I will be singing. One, sorry about this. I'm having technical difficulties. One, sorry. One quick second. Okay. Hopefully this works and I'm sorry for the technical difficulties on my end. Just Fitzpatrick. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a... Hi, I'm Just Fitzpatrick. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a trans man from Fresno, and I will be singing the 1968 theme song from Romeo and Juliet called A Time for Us. A time for us, someday there'll be When chains are torn by courage born Of a love that's free A time when dreams so long denied Can flourish as we unveil the truth we now must hide. 
a time for us at last to see a life worthwhile for you and me. And with our pride through tears and thorns, we will endure as we pass surely through every storm. A time for us, someday there'll be a new world, a world of shining hope for you and me. A time for us at last to see a life worthwhile for you and me. And with our pride, through tears and thorns, we will endure as we pass surely through every storm. A time for us, someday there'll be a new world, a world of shining hope for you and me. A world of shining hope for you and me. Thank you. Okay, one quick second. Sorry, everybody. For some reason, it, when they come out of YouTube, it doesn't allow me. Okay. One second, and thank you everybody for being patient. And with this now, we would like to present the names of transgender lives lost globally. These are the names that have been reported. And with this, we give honor.
Hello everyone and sorry again for the technical difficulties. Um, with this we will be slowly closing up TDOR but I would like to take just a moment of silence um, just to be present for what we've experienced and shared tonight. And with this, I would like to thank all of you for attending TDOR. For those of you who've watched this and this is your first TDOR and you want to get involved, be a voice in your community to advocate for our transgender community. I'm calling upon cisgender allies like myself to step up because that is what needed. And for those of you in the trans and non-binary community, I cannot emphasize enough to tell you all that you are valuable, that you deserve love, validation, and protection. You deserve a better world, and we all need to work towards that. Please reach out to the organizations that we've presented, uh, Facebook Trans in Motion, you can find it there, or to Google the CCGC uh, at the LGBT Key Resource Center. I wanna thank all of our resource fair members, the Cross-Cultural Gender Center, Trans Emotion, the Spectrum Center, uh, the LGBTQ Resource Center, the Source, the Holistic Center. I also want to thank our guest speakers, our keynotes, Henry and Ome. I want to thank Lucas for sharing so much and honoring Ray. I want to thank Jess for his beautiful voice and for all of you for attending. We would like to, um, for those of you who have attended, to please fill out the assessment. There will be a link in the chat. It's really important for uh, events here at Fresno State uh, to show that people are attending, that people care about events like this. So please fill out the assessment. It takes like a minute or so, and we'd really appreciate your feedback. And then last but not least, I know that tonight was hard. And for any of you who need to talk, just being present in the room with others, please, I really much encourage you to attend the Transgender and GNC support group tonight. It's, it's a place of community and friendship. And with that, I'd like to thank everybody for attending. I'm giving you all my love giving you all my love to Trans Emotion, to the CCGC. Thank you for being patient with me with all my technical difficulties and uh, all the love to you. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you, everybody.